Hi everyone, hi again and welcome back to another tutorial, another week, another tutorial. Um, what I'm going to do for the next two or three weeks is I have an exhibition coming up and it's for a kind of, it's, it's for charity basically and it's a local bar close to where I'm living and they fill their walls with lots and lots of artwork and they try and sell as much as they can and they give it a charity basically. Now there's the most there's a very high percentage of the sale from a painting um, going to this charity. So you get a little bit back but it's more for the charity than anything else. So I'm entering in that. I do it every year and I thought I'd bring you along for the journey and help me create some nice artwork for this exhibition. So I'm allowed to put say two big paintings and two or three smaller paintings. So each week I'm going to do a nice painting. This week and next week I'm going to do a two-part tutorial for the next two weeks and I'm thinking a nice big seascape with a good bit of detail. All right, That's one. Um, and then a couple of smaller ones. Uh, something nice and I'm going to really take my time with these because they're for the exhibition. So um, yes, lots and lots of detail. So uh, yeah, things are going to start picking up now, just a little bit more detail for the next couple of weeks. Um, I hope you can still follow them. I will try to keep them a little bit um, on the easy side for you to follow, but I can kind of add in more details myself then perhaps. Um, look, we'll see how it goes. So that's the, um, the idea that I'm playing around with. I have a canvas ready behind me here. It's uh, 700 by 500, so a fairly nice size. And I'll, I'll make frames for all of these and when they're all finished, I'll show you. I'll show you all the paintings finished and even hanging in the, the pub as well, okay, in the bear. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, it's something that they do every year for Cambodia. It, it helps, um, there's a group of people that they go over to Cambodia and they build houses for the homeless over there. So every year they have this charity and it's always a huge success to get to make a lot of money and everything goes into this this charity so they go over then and they build houses every year small little huts we'll say um but proper proper houses so that's the um that's the charity look it up it's um it's in hinchy's hinchy's bar in saint luke's in cork and um it's always very very popular and it's full full to the brim with paintings some fantastic artwork there every year so i'm going to do a couple and i'm going to bring you along for the journey all right um, I'm still kind of messing around with some ideas, I'm still thinking of what to paint. I know I want to paint a seascape, um, but I want to paint something that's kind of recognisable to uh, people of Cork as well. Um, people of Ireland really, because there's a lot of different people there who are going to be buying artwork. So, I'm going to turn the camera and show you my canvas, okay? Let's have a bit of fun with this. So nice colourful paintings this time, really bright colours. All right, now, here we are. 700 by 500 canvas. I was gonna do something like that, um, but I think I might hang this up there. It's a fairly big painting, you can see. I think that's a big enough painting. The ones next to it are, that one over there is a 16 by 12. Um, so you can see in comparison, it's fairly big. And I'll ask them if they'll hang that for me. I don't want to be putting something that's too big because there's a big chance that it might not sell. Um, I think a lot of people kind of buy the smaller little ones at a reasonably cheap price. Um, so yeah, I don't know what to do. I might just hang a couple. I don't have much selection here really, to be honest. So I might do, I might give them this and I'll do that, which is a nice size, uh, a nice seascape on that, and then a couple of smaller ones perhaps. But each week we will do something. Now this one here is going to be a two-part tutorial. I want to take my time. Um, so yes, that's the that's the setup. So I'm going to mount my camera up over my head on this little homemade contraption, weird-looking thing. Um, so yeah, and we'll uh, we get cracking, and we'll have a bit of fun with this. So let me turn the camera again so you can see me. Let's uh, paint. Okay. Once again, thank you very much for all your support. Thank you for following me along and uh, giving me some courage and giving me some inspiration to keep going with this. And I'm glad that, that, that you're getting some help 
and inspiration from my tutorials. Thank you very much for everything that you're doing, all the support. Thank to thank you to everybody on Patreon. Uh, I hope you're enjoying all those extra tutorials. And um, let's let's go with this. All right, don't go anywhere. Okay, here we are. Now you're probably wondering what this picture is for here. Um, I'm going to put the picture that we're painting on your screen. You should see it right there. And this is Ballycotton Lighthouse just off the Cork Coast. Um, now I'm going to use this scene, but what I'm, what I'm thinking about is because it's kind of quite bland in colour. It's sort of just kind of blue, white, a bit of brown on the rocks, a bit of green, that's kind of it. I'm not kind of going for that. So what I'm doing, um, and this might confuse you now just a little bit, so try to bear with me. I'm going to use this composition, so this kind of scene. I'm going to paint it on my canvas, but I'm going to change colours to this. So I'm going to use these kinds of colours. Now, this is just a sky I found. It's a nice kind of warm sky. So I'm going to paint the sky like this, okay? But I'm going to use that as a reference. So we're sketching this. Does that make sense? I'm just not happy with the colours in that photograph, they're quite pale and bland. So we'll make a nice kind of a warm sunset sky with some, as you can see, some nice warm colours coming in and some blues. And we're gonna go for that. So I'm gonna change the colouring of that photograph, all right? I hope you follow. Um, so yeah, just to kind of show you how I would change a photograph, uh, change the colours, uh, change the composition slightly just to make it more kind of eye-catching. Does that make sense? So I'm going to use those colours for my sky and we go from there then after that, all right? We'll darken, our, we'll darken the waves, we'll darken the ocean. We'll get some nice highlights on the rocks and that type of stuff. Um, also, what I'm going to do is, if you see on the photograph there, we have some rocks on the left-hand side coming down. Now, if I paint the sky like this, okay, the sunlight is coming from the left. Wouldn't you agree? So that means there won't be any sunlight catching the rocks because we'll have the sunlight up here, away off outside the photograph. Um, so there won't be much light catching these rocks here. So what I'm planning on doing is reversing the sky. So I'm going to put the blue on the left hand side and put all the sunlight, warm colour on the right hand side. So the sun is coming from this side, coming along and it's going to be catching these lovely rocks then. Does that make sense? So this is just an example of how you can change things around on a photograph. You don't have to copy exactly what you're painting. Um, you can take, say, different skies from different photographs. You can take different colours on different rocks. Um, but we're going to try and keep the composition nice, keep it all kind of similar throughout. So that's the plan. I'm going to use this sky, but I'm going to put the warm colour on the opposite side. Will we try that? No. This might get complicated, but just try and follow me along as best you can. Um, I'll try and simplify it, but at the same time, I'm going to go into depth with this sky. And I might, in fact, um, I was thinking, should I zoom in? Possibly. If I do that, then you see you won't see me mixing. And I'd like to show you my mixing as well. So I'm kind of torn between two, two different aspects. Now, I have a nice fine cup of coffee here next to me because I think I'm going to need it so I matched off my horizon this is my horizon line um, and the photograph is probably slightly higher but I'm going to bring it down a little bit I just want to show more sky because I want to make this a really dramatic sky so I measured down the same on both sides masking tape across this is 700 by 500 canvas um, stretched canvas as you can hear, and I primed it twice, so my brush is going to move lovely on this. Now, brushes. Um, these are the two brushes that I am selling. Can you see those? My little stubby brushes, uh, size 16 and size 12, so large, medium. And these are what I use, okay? They're fantastic for bushes and trees. Um, obviously, when you get them, they're quite flat and chiseled, but they will take a while to wear down. And once they wear, start wearing down then, they go like this. Okay, you can see it's kind of 
quite worn at the moment not too bad but it's nice and eventually it'll get really worn down like this and it's lovely for trees and bushes so those are the brushes I'm selling. If you want those, I can get them to you. Just send me, just send me an email at stephencommon12gmail.com and I'll get them to you. Okay? They're the brushes. I have a little tiny drop of turpentine in this. No linseed oil, nothing else, just turpentine on its own. That's pretty much all I use. That's fine. Some tissue. And we are ready to go. So let's take a um, green stubby brush. Okay, we do most of our painting with this. Now the sky. Nice warm colours. Um, and I'm going to try and separate the blue from the warm colours with some clouds. So I think I'll start off with some blue um, on this side here. Okay, let's dampen the brush. Now I hope you can see me alright and I hope my head is not kind of cutting into the photograph too much or into the video because I've I have a big old ball patch up at the back of my head there and I don't want you looking at a ball patch all the time. So forgive me if my head kind of goes in and out of the shot. It's quite a big canvas. Dampen the brush and just tap it dry, okay? So it's, it's just damp, it's not soaking. And let's take some titanium white. By the way, I never told you what colours I'm using. So I'll tell you what colours I'm using. I have titanium white, a little Naples yellow, some cadmium yellow pale, a little touch of phthalo blue, just a little, I might not even need it to be honest, but it's there just in case. Some cobalt blue, cadmium red, um, some nathol crimson, or regular crimson would do fine, some burnt cyanide, burnt umber, and a little lamp black. Okay, they my colours. Now, some titanium white, so a nice damp brush, some cobalt blue, we'll try that, mix that in there, and you can see how creamy it is, look, it's kind of running slightly, but I'll thicken it slightly now with the white, take more white, and it's a matter of practice just to get your consistency just right, it's like a thin cream out of a tub, that's the best way I can kind of describe this texture, now it's a rich blue, so let's put plenty of blue into this. So I'm mixing a lot of this now. We're going to get a nice rich blue up in the sky. So as I said, I'm reversing this photograph. So the blue is going to go on this side. So let's put that on. Oh, that's nice. Now look at that. And you can see how well the paint flows across my canvas because I primed it twice. And it's my own primer. You can use gesso if you like. Gesso is absolutely fine as well. But I just find the gesso... Um, where I live here the gesso is very very expensive it's like it's 30 quid it's, it's 30 euro for a small tub of gesso and I think that's very very expensive so I made my own and in fact I think my own is probably slightly better as well um, I basically just use some normal water based undercoat I mix in say 30% PVA glue so PVA glue is like a sealer, is an adhesive, a sealer, and a primer. So mix that in to your white undercoat and a little drop of water, give it a good mix, and that's my primer. And I think it's fantastic. Have I another one of these flies now flying around me here? Driving me crazy. Um, okay, blue. I come across maybe to there with my blue. And I'm going to start making it a little richer on top because I know it's very rich up there. So let's go right in there now with some cobalt blue. Right up the top. And again, um, cobalt blue is very, very forgiving. So you can put on plenty of it, but it will kind of fade away slightly. Whereas if you're using French ultramarine, it's a very, very rich blue. So it can be very, very overpowering. Um, early on. So that's why I prefer using cobalt blue and tailor blue because they're more earthy and they're much more forgiving as well. Now let's just soften that right across there. Okay and I might um, I might take a touch let's take some more cobalt 
I might take a touch of cadmium red, just a touch. Just to warm it ever so slightly and it's just barely on the, the corner of the brush. A tiny, 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 tiny little bit. Just warm it slightly in that corner there. And in fact I'm going to take a little touch of tail or blue. And tail or blue is much more kind of a greeny hue of a blue. Touch of cadmium red in that. Just to get this nice and rich, just at the top there, okay? There. I think that will suffice for now. Um, let's have a look at the photo again. Now we have some lovely reds, orangey, reds, yellows, that kind of stuff going on. But I don't want to any I don't want to create any greens by the reds and the blues and the yellows and blues mixing. So I'm going to put a little purple cloud just along here first, okay? Little purple. And I could do the same brush. In fact, we have a purple on the bottom here, see? So we will put a layer of purple clouds just underneath this. So let's do that. Again, same brush. Dip the corner in your turpentine. Just dampen it very slightly. Dab it gently on the tissue to take off the excess. And let's take some cobalt, some, um, I think I'll go for cadmium red. No, I must get more cobalt blue. Do forgive me. So I'm excited now that you're coming along with me on this journey. And um, when I have all these up in the, the bear hanging, um, I'm going to videotape all of that and record everything for you as well as I'm going. So you can see them hanging in place along with everything else. It's going to be exciting. So, cobalt blue, um, some cadmium red. Let me just take a look at that now, just for a moment. Right, let's take a touch of white. Let's just tame that down now very slightly. That's a bit better, I would think. So look, I'm just cutting up slightly into that blue. Bring that down all the way down with your brush. Let's mix some more. Cobalt blue, a touch of cadmium red, a touch of white. And I'm going for more on the blue side with this. And look, I'm kind of flicking my brush just around in circles. And that gives you that kind of cloudy feeling then as well, that cloudy texture. Understand? Um, now, I'm going to take some cobalt blue this time with some th with some naphthol crimson. And that should give me a more pinky tone. With a touch of white. And I'm using pretty much thick paint now on its own. There's hardly any thinners in this at all. Um, because the canvas is well primed, paint is moving nicely on this. I don't really have to thin it out too much. Now let me just kind of get a feel for this. Um, I'm going to darken it slightly on the left. Uh, some cadmium red. There we go. I'm going to darken it slightly just here. And I'm only going for a general impression now of the cloud, okay? I'll take a touch of black into that. And just down at the bottom, I'm going to put a touch of blacky blue in there. And it's almost kind of mixing on the canvas as well. See? So, let me take a look at this. Um, okay, it's looking okay. I'll take some white. I'm going to start lightening it slightly over here. So some white with some cobalt. And I'm going to start ever so gently just lightening that. So it's going from a kind of a purple, isn't it, into a kind of a red, browny red, and then an orange. Okay, so you can see it there. It's going from a blue 
to a kind of a red, browny red. And how do we do that now without creating green, without getting green into it? Well, I'm going to start now first by taking some white and I'm going to create some light on these clouds here. So again, the sun is here, alright, out of the painting. So there's going to be some light catching these here and there. And look, I'm just going to flick it around here and there with my big brush. And I'm going to soften it into the cloud. And I'm just going for some texture, that's all I want to create. This is just a little texture. Um, let's put a couple here. So just the impression of a few kind of clouds flicking around here and there, off in the distance, way, way off in the distance. Okay, I'll soften this now. Very, very gently. Soften this gently on the side, just up into your sky there. And that creates a nice kind of a mist as well off in the distance, doesn't it? Very, very, very gently. I'm hardly even touching the canvas now with this. Now, every so often I'm sitting back to take a look at this. So this is going to be a very, very in-depth tutorial now. Very in-depth. So you're going to learn a lot with this. And again, it's my pleasure. I love teaching you guys out there just a the basic, just a basic kind of know-how for working with oils. I love teaching all you budding artists, beginners, um, easy techniques, and an easy way of approaching a painting. Now, this is going to be a very in-depth painting, so um, I will try and keep it as easy as I can. Again, okay, we have some white cloud up here in this blue sky. See it? Little white flicks flicking across. So I'm going to get my jar of brushes and let me see now. Hmm. I will take just a simple flat brush. So what I take? Um. Hmm. I'll take my medium stubby brush. Okay. A stop of coffee to keep me going and with this dry brush now let's just take some white a little bit of white on its own and this white will mix slightly with the blue so we have some little white clouds flicking down don't we now everything is in reverse okay so the clouds on this photo here are flicking down this way aren't they so this way it's going to be coming that side so let's just flick some of these clouds down okay very gently with the car, with the edge of the brush. Look, I'm not being too fussy at all. I kind of a little wiggle here and there. Don't be afraid, it's only paint. I know you're saying to yourself, oh look, I, always, I, I want to try and get it right the first time, I don't want to make a mess of it. Look, it's only paint, if you make a mess of it, you can blend it back in again. Um, couple just along here you see it's just some hints of white in the sky that's all then dry that and look what we'll do is with my clean blender brush let's soften them very gently into the blue Look, just taking the edge off of them, that's all. Making them slightly softer. Okay? So, I suppose... I suppose you could call this tutorial more of a sky tutorial, couldn't you? Because we're focusing kind of primarily on the sky in this section. Now, so we're halfway there. We have half our sky done. This is where it starts getting tricky. We now need to move into oranges and browns and reds, okay? But we have a lot of blue here, don't we? And I don't want this going green. So what I'm going to do is, rather than just putting a brown or a red in here, I'm going to start moving, changing this blue into more of a pink and then a plum. 
and then from a plum to a kind of a ready winey colour and then we can go to reds and browns you see so I'll always put a colour in between the blue and the, the yellow and orange I'll always put some kind of a pinky colour in between and that stops anything then going green you see so I'm going to um, let me see now I use the same, yeah, I'll use the same brush, okay? Large green stubby brush. Um, whatever brush you have, large flat brush, okay? Give that a quick clean there. And I'm going to dampen the corner of my brush just again. Just barely, just a corner. Just to make it damp. And I'm going to make up a nice kind of a bluey, plummy colour. So let's take some cobalt. And again, I apologise if you're looking at my ball patch. You don't want to be seeing a ball patch, do you? Um, some cobalt, some cadmium red. But I'm going to make it more kind of whiny this time, alright? So you can see now it's more of a plummy, plummy colour. Okay, you can see that. I'm going to start with this plummy colour. Coming along. And in fact, you could use this up here as well. Because you can see there's a kind of a bit of plum up there, isn't there? But I'm going to use it up here as well, and that will complement the oranges. So I'm just creating an indication of some of those clouds up there. And look, it will soften down into the blue then. Now I'm going to soften this here as well, into the blue. So this blue now is going from a light blue into a kind of a plum, and then start adding more red. So now I'm going to make some cadmium red with some cobalt blue, but it's going to be very kind of on the red side. See? And soften that in. Just kind of dab it around with your brush very, very randomly. And again, some cadmium red up here. I put some cadmium red in behind that. Soften that in again. And by the way, we can soften all of these now with our blender brush as well, as we need to. So now we've gone from a blue to a kind of a red, haven't we? A plum. Plum with a bit of red. And I'm going to soften that very gently. There we go. And soften the top here up into that blue. And it's just kind of creating some mist in the sky, isn't it? That's all, really. So, keeping it nice and simple again. Nice and easy. And I try and keep it as easy as I can for you to follow. But, at the same time, I know you're kind of eager to learn a lot more in-depth stuff, aren't you? So, I am trying to... For these next two tutorials now we're going to be going into depth, right, lots of detail. So, we now have a bit of red, don't we? So now we can start increasing the red and the brown. So we can start, um, okay, let's go for burnt sienna. And you can see I'm mixing everything in the same spot, okay? You don't have to go all over your palette here with different areas. So burnt sienna. And let's take some cadmium red. I'm not going to use crimson because there's that much pink in this. It's more of an orangey red, isn't it? So let's take that. Let's now add that just along the side here. Bring it over here slightly. And I'm kind of scrubbing this now pretty much dry paint into my canvas look. Okay. And then, now I'm going to take a touch more red. And I'm going to just soften that across into the plum. So then it's not going green, you see, because there's more red in the mix. See? And then we can soften it together. And I won't blend it too much. I don't want any green again, so I blend it very gently, like so. Now you can begin to see the colours taking shape, can't you? So now we have a very rich orangey colour. So let's take some cadmium red, um, some burnt sienna, 
And how about a touch of yellow? Now if I put yellow into this, you see, because there's burnt sienna in the mix, it could go tinge, a greeny tinge. So just a touch of yellow. Let's try that. Okay, it's a bit red. So give the brush a wipe on some tissue there. Take some yellow, bring that in, and let's take a touch of white. Just to brighten it ever so slightly. And more yellow. Let's try that. There. It's a bit better, a bit more orangey red, isn't it? And I might bring it across a bit further. So I'm going to take more red, a little more yellow, touch of white. Only the slightest little touch now. And I'm using again a very completely dry brush for this. So I'm using a dry brush because there's only little bits of canvas to cover. If I was painting a whole sky like that, then I would add turpentine. But I don't really need it, it's only a small bit of canvas to cover, so I can scrape the, the paint into it, you see. Now I'm going to take some burnt sienna, and it's going to start getting darker here, isn't it? So let's take some burnt umber as well. And I'm going to start up at this corner here. So we're getting darker now. And again, don't worry, we can add to these colours as we're going. Um, let me take some um, yellow with the burnt sienna. So you can see it's going to get a more kind of an earthy sienna kind of a colour. Don't worry, we'll, we'll add the yellow in to this in a moment. I'll put in some nice bright yellow for the sun. And I'm going to take some cadmium red with a little touch of cobalt blue Let's scrub that along so you can see now how we're kind of changing colours as we go on the canvas we're just kind of taking some colour and mixing it on the canvas now I'm going to soften this into this plummy colour that we have very gently look rubbing the two together see There we are. So each colour is picking up a little. So the plum is picking up some of the ready brown. The ready brown is picking up some of the plum. And yeah, we have a nice blend of colours going on there, don't we? So let's take some more plum for this. Some cobalt blue. Some cadmium red. And you know what? I didn't even use the crimson yet. Let's take a touch of crimson. Now, see the little darker colour up there. Create some cloud. Now, more cobalt blue there in that. And a bit more red. All I'm doing is going around in circular motions with my brush, that's all. Okay? See? creating a little cloud and we will have a couple of highlights here as well in the cloud so don't worry we'll get some nice sunlight on the clothes as well in a minute oh, I want to bring some pink across into that blue so some red some white and it'll take a touch of cobalt I just want to bring that warmth a little bit over here, you see, just into that blue. So we have kind of a pinky colour now going on. Just a little. And it's just trial and error, really. That's kind of how I'm painting this now, I'll be honest. I'm kind of trying different things. It may not work out, but I'm trying it. If, it, if I make a mistake here, I will fix it live on camera. 
I'm not going to go back and edit it and cut it out. I like to be real and I like to show you how I paint my paintings in real time. Now I'm going to soften some of these in. See, just nice and soft, nice and gentle. I know there's a very dark area up here, isn't there? But we can put that in too. Don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. There we go. Nice and soft. Okay, how's that looking? How is our sky coming on so far? That looks like a nice warm sky, doesn't it? So you see, we have a lovely balance now in our sky. We have a lovely cool blue against a lovely rich warm. And they're really kind of complementing each other, aren't they? You see, that's what, that's what I like. Now we have um, some lovely yellow going on in there, don't we? Before I do that, I'm going to clean this brush my medium brush, just dip it in your turpentine and rub it on your tissue, okay? You don't have to swirl it around like that in your turpentine because you'll just dirty it very quickly. This is how I clean my brushes. And now it's clean again. A nice dark colour up here. Um, I'm going to go for some burnt umber and I will take, um, now let me think about this. Let's take a touch of cobalt blue. Let's try that. That's good. And you see, it's mixing with the ready brown underneath as well. Okay, let's take a bit more blue. Now, it may turn a little green, but I can see, I can see a hint of an ochre colour. Browny ochre colour on that. Well, that, that's okay. Leave that, and I'm going to soften that then again. Let's pull that down, soften that down in, in there into that sky, okay? It's swooping, it's kind of swooping down, isn't it? There we go. Now, again, I'll sit back. Have a quick look at that. Okay, that looks pretty nice, doesn't it? Nice dramatic sky. And we have some yellow, don't we? Let's get a little yellow in there. And for that, I'm going to take a nice flat kind of a brush. So, well, it's something relatively flat anyway. This perhaps, okay? This has a nice relatively flat kind of appearance to it. So now, let's take some, with a dry brush again. This is already wet. We don't need to wet our brush. This is wet already. So we're putting thick paint now on top of this thinner paint. Let's take some cadmium yellow. Um, come down here somewhere clean. Some ri rich cadmium yellow. And let's take a hint of red. Just a hint, okay? Just to warm it very, very slightly. Now we could go straight in there with this color, I would think. I'm just looking now. Um, okay. That looks pretty good. Let's introduce some of this yellow in here and there. Now, now of course it's going to mix with the red that's already there, making it more, more and more orangey. But it's just an impression I'm going for of the sun. That's all. Kind of out of the painting. Does that make sense? Okay, let's take a touch more red in this. Okay, and see, see, just wiggle the brush around here and there. Then give it a clean on our tissue again. Every time it gets dirty, give it a quick clean. And just introduce some of that colour here and there. Just to brighten the sky ever so, ever so gently. Now let's take a touch of white in this. Oh, that's a bit better now, isn't it? Okay, 
Okay, give it another rub. Go back in there again, touch of white into the yellow, make it nice and bright. And up here, another little bit. And let's put a little strip of down along the bottom here, like so. Again, sit back slightly, have a look. Now, I must get some more yellow on my palette because I've run out of yellow. And it's cadmium yellow pale hue, alright? And this is a Windsor and Newton. So you can mix the Windsor and Newton with the Georgian. Okay, they're both pretty much the same types of paint. Consistency is almost identical. So two different manufacturers of paint, but they're pretty much the same to work with. Now, more cadmium yellow with a touch of white. I just want to create that impression of the sun off in the distance, out of the painting. And I want to create some hitting the bottom or the underside of these clouds here. Okay. And I know you probably can't see that very well now, but I can see it here. It's very, very bright. Now let's go for some yellow just on its own, okay? Cadmium yellow, rich cadmium yellow. Isn't that lovely? And again, you see it's going to soften slightly up into that dark, isn't it? So I'm going to soften it slightly here and there, up into the dark. Off it goes. And it takes a bit of practice to get this technique right. It does take practice, I will admit. Okay, clean my brush. I'm going to take some cadmium yellow again. Just a little. I only use little bits of paint as well, by the way, when I'm doing these paintings, okay? You see, just little bits. You don't have to fill your brush with paint. And let's go for a touch of cadmium red. And let's bring a nice warm colour right along the bottom there. Now take some more red into that. And let's bring some of that across, just across off of the distance in the horizon, okay? Just a little. Just to help it kind of flow more naturally across. Even just that now I think is, is a bit better, isn't it? It makes a big difference. So on your camera there, I'm looking on the screen on the camera there now, okay? Because I have a little um, LCD display. And I can see on that camera that you're looking at, that yellow is not very yellow, but it's very yellow where I can see it here. It's probably just that camera. The, the colouring or the, the lighting in the studio. So look, I'll brighten it a bit more for you, so you can see. So you can see that a little bit better, can't you? You see, I'm thinking about you all the time, the viewer. More yellow, more white. Get in there, really go for it. Look. Now, let's take our soft brush and soften first the top section very gently down and then we go very gently over the yellow. Like so. And I think I will leave it at that. I think that's good. Now, I want to just add a couple of complementary highlights on these clouds here. So I want to hit those clouds with just a tiny hint of kind of an orangey yellow, just here and there. So the sun is coming across the sky and catching just here and there, alright? So I'm going to take a nice small little brush for this. Okay, a small little flat brush. It's not completely flat, but it's, it's, it's fine. Let's take some white. Um, and we have an orangey colour already, look, made up. 
But let's take a bit more yellow in that. And watch now, watch what happened, okay? It's a very, a kind of a, what would you say? A warm yellow, a kind of an orangey, salmony kind of a yellow. So do you want me to zoom in slightly for this? I will, will I? There. So a warm salmony kind of a colour on this. Bit of yellow, bit of red. And look, just here and there on those. I'm not mixing it too much because if you mix the yellow too much into the blue, it'll go green, won't it? So I'm just kind of dabbing it. Now let's put a little bit more red into that. So it doesn't go as green. There. Little couple of dabs. And the, and the whites of the clouds. Okay. Um, can even make it a bit pinker, can't we? Well now we can kind of see the clouds are getting some sunlight, aren't they? I might do that even with your finger. You can use a blender brush if you like. Do I lose my finger, I think? Let's just soften those here and there, look. Okay. I'll go with the blender as well. Look, let's just soften them back in with the blender. And that's just a little bit of light coming across the sky, catching the tips of the clouds. So now let's zoom back and see how that kind of complements the rest of the sky. So you can see now, it just brightens it slightly, doesn't it? Ever so slightly, just a little. Now we do have some brighter clouds here. Shall we do those? Let's do those. Let's take some white. And let's take a touch of cadmium red. And perhaps a touch of Naples yellow this time. Let's go for Naples. So the Naples is not as rich as the cadmium yellow. Um, so it won't tend to go green very, very quickly. And let's just suggest one or two bright clouds just there. Okay? So cutting down the front of these and then it's going to kind of gently soften in. Alright? Now let's mix a little shadow for those. So let's go with a touch of cobalt blue and some cadmium red, but again, more red. More red in the mix. So it's more of, again, a kind of a plum. Mix a bit of plum into those. And then they're going to soften back in to the rest of the sky, look. Let's take our soft brush and soften those back gently. Okay, and soften it down here as well. So this is a very in-depth kind of a sky now, isn't it? Now if you want to just really hit those, let's just take some of that white and give them some real proper whitey highlights. How about a touch of cadmium? Let me try that. Um, let's give one down here. 
Again, avoiding just going green, don't mix it too much. So how does that look? I think that's a success, wouldn't you? So shall we call this guy finished? Now let me just have another kind of quick glance around. What can we improve? Um, let's put a little bit of light across some of these. Just a touch here and there. Look, just a touch. And that'll bring those to life as well. Okay? Just like that. That's okay, I'm happy with that. Um, anything else around here that we could pick up on? Hmm. Let's take a quick look. No, I think that's... I think it's pretty, pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, let's put one in just here. One little cloud round in circles and soften it back then, okay? Soften it in gently. Alright, looks good. I think we'll call this sky finished. Let's remove the masking tape. This is the exciting part. I love this. There we go, look at that beautiful, crisp, colourful sky. Now didn't that turn out nice? I thought that turned out fantastic. Let me take a sup of coffee, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate this lovely sky. It's a, a huge success. So here we are. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to just sketch in. I'm going to look at the other photograph now, okay? And I'm going to sketch in where the lighthouse and stuff is. So we have a big bank of rocks coming down here, don't we? So let's just put that in very, very roughly like that. It comes out into the ocean, like so. Now we can... Make this bigger and we can adjust it as we go. Okay, look, let's make it like that. We have a bank that comes out. Um, and it comes out like so, doesn't it? And then it comes up and it disappears back again like that. That's like a little bank off in the distance. Little kind of a sea edge, like a rocky area there. Right there. Now the lighthouse is off in the distance like that. And it comes up, like so, and back down, like so, doesn't it? And the lighthouse is in the centre then. But we can do that last. This is just a very, very rough sketch. So we're going to have lots of waves and all that type of stuff. Okay? I'm going to show you about painting waves and um, painting lots of rocks and that kind of thing. A couple of rocks out here in the water. Okay, I'm happy with that. So I'm checking the time on the, on the video now because I don't want to make these too long. I'm on 47 minutes. Um, hmm. We go a little bit. We maybe paint a little bit of the ocean, yes? Yeah, I think that's what we do. So let's take our big brush. And it's not going to be just a blue ocean. It's going to start off like a browny green over here. Okay? An orangey kind of a colour. So let's take some red. I'm going to dampen my brush very slightly again. There, that's a bit better now, isn't it? Um, a little bit of cyanide. And I'm going to take into that a touch of cobalt. And that will make it slightly muddy, kind of browny, greeny kind of a colour. Now, so it's going to start off warm like that, but it's going to get bluer and bluer and bluer, okay? And I'm kind of experimenting here on myself as I go along. I'm not 100% sure of what I'm even doing, to be honest. Um, so, yeah. Let's hope for the best, as they say. Now dampen that again. Uh, let's take hmm, some blue into that. A 
And what I'm going to do actually is, I am going to, um, let me just get this on first. I'm actually going to soften soften some of that into the sky. Just take the hard edge off of it, okay? There we go. Just go over it, back and forward, once or twice, not too much. Again, we don't want anything going green, do we? There. That just helps, I think. Now, what are we doing? Okay. Um, dampen the brush again. So you can see now it's beginning to turn more blue, isn't it? So let's take some cobalt and some cadmium. And I think a touch of white. Let's look, let's brighten it slightly. And then let's take some more cobalt, even a touch of tail up. So you can see now we've gone from a warm colour to a cool colour. Because the sky is cool on this side. So that's a nice transition now, you see. Um, more cobalt blue on my palette. Go through a lot of cobalt blue, that's good. I love cobalt blue. Let's take some cobalt blue and dampen the brush again, just slightly, ever, ever so slightly. And let's take some, hmm, that crimson colour and a hint of white. So what do we have now? Nice pinky kind of a colour, don't we? Now this is just kind of an undercoat. We'll go over a lot of this, don't worry. Okay, see? We'll add some lights and some darks here and there. Not to worry. It'll be fine. So I'm going to bring some of that colour now into this. I'm damping my brush again, just slightly. I'm going to take some cobalt blue, take some of the crimson, but more crimson this time. And I'm going to just start warming it slightly. So that's transitioning then from this brownie ready colour into a kind of a plum and a blue. Does that make sense? So let's take some more cobalt. And now you see, it's going to start getting blue. So I'm thinking, we call this part one, yes? I'm thinking we should call this part one finished. And before I do, I just want to take my little flat brush that I used earlier. I'm going to put some of this brownie colour through the ocean first, just to reflect some of those colours down. So let's take some burnt cyanide first. So let's just pull some burnt cyanide just across here and there, look, just a little. And let's take some cadmium yellow. Now you see, it's gone green there because I mixed burnt sienna with some cadmium yellow. So I'll give the brush a good clean on some tissue. Let's take some cadmium yellow, some cadmium red, and let's put some of that through here. And let's take some crimson with some white and let's put some nice pink colour through here. Okay. And then I want to get some of that yellow kind of colour reflected in the ocean. Just a hint of it. Just a hint. Ah. There, you see, just a little, just here and there. And then let's just soften, the blender brush just soften very gently across. So yeah, there we go. Are we all happy with that? I think I'm going to call that part one of this tutorial finished. Alright? 
Let me just zoom in for you so you can see, get a better look at what we've done. Now, I know that yellow on the cloud looks, it looks very yellow, doesn't it, on camera? But it's not, it's actually more of a white. Um, I think it's just a lighting in my studio here. So you can see now how easily we created all of these clothes. Just adding colour in, pulling it down, okay? There we go. So I'll take a photograph of this now and I'll put it on the end of the video. And um, we'll show you how it uh, looks on a proper photograph. So you don't see this luminous kind of colour. Now let me turn this around. So there we are. I really have to sort out this lighting. You see, I have one kind of a strip light, which is very um, white, it's a daylight white tube. Then I have another one hanging down, which is kind of a yellowy light, because I'm trying to get the lighting right on the, floor, on, on the canvas, so it's very tricky. I'm kind of messing around with different lights all of the time. Um, I don't have a, not, a, a whole lot of natural light coming into the studio. It's only just a, a glorified barn, I should really. So I know roof lights, I only have two windows, one on each side, um, to let light in. So I'm messing around with lots of different kinds of spotlights and all that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, I'm trying my best to get it just right. But I'm getting there, aren't I, in fairness now. I've come a long way since my very first tutorial, in my bedroom. Isn't that right? So I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I call this a nice sky tutorial, basically. Um, slash seascape, yes? So I'll have part two for you coming up um, next week, okay? So in the meantime, you can use this to um, practice some skies and, you know, complementing skies with cools and warms, um, blues, pinks, you know, add some colour into your sky. So thank you very, very much for tuning in this week to watch me paint. Um, I hope you've gotten some Little hints and tips out of that, um, if at all. Um, I hope you've just enjoyed watching me, and I hope you've gotten some inspiration from watching me paint. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you to my patrons. I have another nice one coming up for you very, very soon. Um, again, Stephen Conway, 12 at gmail.com if you want brushes. And uh, if you have any questions whatsoever, or if you want to send me your paintings for my views and analysis, let's say, um, Please do send them to me. I'd love to see how you're getting on. All right. So uh, don't come anywhere. Part two coming up um, very soon, and we'll finish it in part two. So thank you very much, and God bless. Happy painting. <laughs>